So, let me try and pull up the... Oh, that's not it. Not even ready? Do you have it? Yeah. Well, I was... Okay, wait, I have my... If it just loads... Okay. So, I was asked yesterday by one of my friends if this would return an error or if it would make them all the same type, and I said all the same type. I... Yeah, so this means, right? So this means you're defining a new type A that's a B. Yeah. You're defining a new type C that's a D, right? Which are all implicit types. Yeah. And then you have a variable X, which is type A, a variable Y, which is type C. So then when you see this, so what do you know about X and Y? They all become the same type. They all become the same type, and also Z also becomes the same type. But okay. what type is that? Uh, B, because it was first. Yes, B because it's first, exactly. Okay. Are you building your normal off type? <coughs> uh, no, I had to cancel. Okay. Uh, but I'm if you need me with me, we can schedule something, because otherwise I can do answer questions now. Uh, I'm just saying, just because the, the TA can attest to this, and my project deleted itself in front of his eyes. Um, so I had to restart twice yesterday. Did you submit? Uh, I hadn't submitted anything at that point, but it literally was right in front of his eyes that it deleted itself. He can attest to that. But um, uh, I sent him an email, so okay. I'm kind of yeah, waiting on that. Yeah, send him and me an email. And then we'll Yep. On the project uh, type checking error, it says that there was one condition that says that uh, the condition must be Boolean. I wonder like what can it trigger that like, in the condition part? Like, yes, condition? So yeah. some table has a basic form, so list. Yeah, 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 yeah so you can look at it. I mean, the am I allowed to kind of like in the condition, you know, it has a left file and left file and it has relu? Does that relu so must be kind of like one of those things or it can be like one of those kind of like uh, I mean left, right, and blue. The, the condition, right? Right. So you have a. <coughs> so there's a relu. Am I allowed the relus to be like something rather than like less or, or can it be kind of like pass, minus kind of stuff? It's not an yeah. error lock. It's a string. All my types uh, are strings. Well, you have to follow the grammar, there. right? So yeah. The question is, can that ever occur in this grammar? No. So I, so I kind of like, what can it, what can ever trigger that uh, condition must be Boolean thing? Yes. So basically, whenever if you see a condition, right? Yeah. If it's an ID, the type of this ID must be a Boolean. Type. Okay. Right. If it's a relational operator, then you don't have to do anything because you know a relational operator will always return a Boolean. But for a relational operator, the rule holds that the left hand side must be the same type as the right hand side. So you have to check for that. Too. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. So I'm like pretty much using like four different lists, like a implicit uh, type list, a um, explicit type list, implicit uh, variable list, and explicit variable list. Is that okay. like? Hmm? And okay to go about doing it close, because man. by the time you're done with like the I type section, you should have collected all like the explicit types and implicit types. I don't even, I, I, I honestly don't know uh, what I'm missing. At not this point. necessarily I hate because it. once you it's, it's, when you it's parse like what the happened with the last project, uh, you may have new implicit huh? types in the body. Uh, or uh, oh yeah, that's right. Okay, okay. So also when you're in the body, right? Because when you see a new implicit variable. An implicit variable has a brand new implicit oh, type that you've never seen before. <laughs> so when you're done with the type section and variable section, you should have collected all the explicit and implicit types. No, that's what I'm saying. Even Almost. oh, because even types can be in the well, not, body. Not, not explicitly, right? But let's see. Uh, huh? um, right so here. Okay. Are there, <laughs> I don't even know if I'm gonna die. I got tested so like here, what's the type of yeah, W in this example? Well. well, I mean, isn't that an uh, implicit variable? Yeah, it's an implicit variable. So what's the type of an implicit variable? Uh, the whatever the on the right hand side is the. Kind of, but I, I wouldn't think of it like that because you're forcing it to be something that it may not be, right? Yeah. But because what if you have two implicit variables? Like what if I have W equals Foo. I haven't defined foo, right? So I have two implicit variables. Right? So that so has no of, type? Huh? That has no type? W has no type? Ah, it has a new implicit type. Unknown type. Yes, it has a new unknown type. So you can think about it's exactly the same as if you declared here a variable w with some new type that hasn't been seen as implicit. So w has an unknown type. 
Yes. But there's no way to like store that information. Yeah, yeah. It's just a new implicit type. You've just given a new name that you don't have a name for anything else. But we would never print that, would we? No. To test. No. Correct. That's weird. Okay. Um, the other key difference is, is that when you don't know, just because this type is not unknown and the next type is not unknown, does not mean they're both the same type of unknown. Yes. They're different unknowns. So couldn't you just like <laughs> you just use null or something? You don't need to actually hold it. Oh, but you need a type. You need you need a, a type. A type for it because oh. what if later on oh. it, it turns out that W is actually an int, right? Oh. I made okay. the, the mistake of, of yeah, yeah. sending so, all on. So the sort of going on with this. So would you, would you recommend like when you create an um, an implicit variable? Um, you would not only would you create a new implicit variable entry in the symbol table, mm -hmm. you would also create a separate. Yeah, implicit fair uh, type. Yes. And, okay. Well, how is that? Well, like, oh, you, you have to create a new so one that you have to reference to, to but you could have infinite of these Const variables every time I add an unknown with type, it's infinite just different name. types. Of the next time I add an yeah, just like you can have infinite number of types and infinite number of variables. So I mean, it's not infinite. All my unknown types are unknown. But you would have to keep. You have to. Okay. So you can like when you're parsing this type table, right? You're you're creating a table and adding types to it dynamically, right? Right, like as I go through, yeah, I'm adding table. to yeah. the so you list. Have a function to add types to your table. Right. So why can't you do that here? You just give it your own internal name for this type. I did actually. I so I technically have yeah. three I, tables in yeah. my code. I only actually ever that's use two of them. Only should one be done. Actually, but, but so, but really keeping those four lists that I was I trying to, that's cool. That yeah, I could just add. Because I've been doing that with the explicit so far, and that's working all right. It's the first time you see, you know, implicit type. You just add it. Yeah, there's plenty of ways to do it. I mean, you could do it like that. You could do it one giant list of types. I mean, I would keep the types and the variables. Separate. Yeah. Table just keeps uh, everything. But you okay. could have just like a symbol list, yeah. but have each element of that list yeah, be a struct that I has all the metadata. Right? Yeah, what's the, the name of it? What's the uh, is it a variable? Is it a type? Is it implicit? Is it explicit? That's kind of what I Okay, cool. Thank you. I appreciate it. So I'm getting close to the end. Would you be willing to give me just some, some extra test cases? Because I just I've been hammering at test cases for hours yesterday. I just can't get anything extra. So I sent you my code, because I would show you my laptop, but my laptop's dead. Oh. Um, <laughs> so would you be willing to test some test cases on my code and see if I'm... Uh, right now, no, because okay. we're recording. And yeah, <laughs> fair enough. It's only that I don't want to pull up my email and, and put it on YouTube. I understand, I understand. I actually think of those questions from students. I so if really you'd be that. willing, if you could test my code against some test cases... What test cases are you failing? Yeah. Maybe I can... I'm passing, I'm passing all the, the syntax, all the one dots and two dots. Okay. I'm passing 19 out of 24 on the semantics. I'm pretty sure my errors are probably coming from not printing out the, the table at the end properly. Okay. I'm sure that's it. Um, and I'm passing three out of five on the extra credit. Okay. So... Uh, yeah, I'm not sure why I'm not passing all of five on the. I'm assuming all five on the extra credit are just checking for whether that the um, the variable in the switch statement is an int. So I have a check for if it's a consonant, that that's good. If it's a variable, that's that is of type int, then that's good. If it's an unknown type, then it assigns that type to int. I mean stuff like that. But I'm only passing three five. Uh, <laughs> so it means that the thing inside the case statement is an int, right? And mm -hmm. then it. Are you next? Too many cases. I know. I'm just saying that. Cool. It also means this is an integer. Yep. And then everything in so, here is an integer. So if that's, if that's you know, and if it's not foo in this case, if it's 10, then it'll pass. If it's 1.2, it won't pass, because that's that's real. Um, if, foo so an if foo is an unknown type, it assigns that unknown type to int. Okay. And then if foo is not an integer type, it throws an error. Okay. So I think that's... And that's also in the cases? Mm -hmm. Can we do, can we have cases? That's, that that causes syntax errors. Okay. I'm pretty sure it says it has to be a number. Yeah, no. Yeah. But then you're also correctly type checking the body too, because that's the other thing you have. Much, to that should just be, I'm doing it all in the parsing, so it should just automatically catch that. Well, assuming you're properly parsing the body. Is what I mean. Like, that's what I mean. If you're properly doing that, then yes. Um, I think I am. I think <laughs> I could I could throw a switch statement inside a switch statement and see what happens. I would try that. Okay. Um, so you're passing all these. Yeah. Mostly these. And I'm passing 19 out of 24 on those. Yeah, I'll maybe take a look. Okay.
Just let me know. Cool. I, for, for whatever reason, when I was tapping it on my phone, I accidentally hit send. So the first email has nothing in it, and then the second email. Has okay. Totally Sorry. Usually, I don't eat, ask teacher teachers about code. But so I'm passing the syntax tests, mm -hmm. but my while wow statement isn't actually working. Okay. I have no clue why I passed the test, and no clue why it's not working. So. Um, well, I would go with the not working thing as a problem first. Yeah, I yeah. That's so, really more so I have I made this simple, simple file, right, <laughs> to check a while loop, and this would be the left operand, that'd be the right operand. Mm -hmm. So, in my parsing, I'm like, because I couldn't, I couldn't check if this was this to get the 1.4 error. I couldn't. I couldn't okay, match x. Like? I couldn't match x to this type because that would throw an error because you're not supposed to use it as a variable, right. right? And I'm like, why is it doing this? So when I went through, uh, in in my condition, my condition parse function, when I call the second primary, so like when I do primary and then mm -hmm. get the left operand is x, mm -hmm. and then I check if it's a relational operator, mm -hmm. and then I call primary again. It switches the left operand to cool. the new primary call. Leave the code. Leave the code. Okay. So the syntax errors is just making sure you're not you're actually um, you're parsing it correctly in the sense that you throw a syntax error if there's a syntax error, right? You're, oh, okay. You're properly. You're, I see. You, this is a correct test case syntax-wise, okay. yeah. so it passes, which means it passes. Um, okay. So. It it works differently as well for. Um, if I put a number, then an ID. It works, it works differently. And then when I call, mm, that means you have something super weird going on. Okay. Yeah. So left operand primary t type get greater greater than less than less than not equal less than q relational operator good primary again. Okay, it's got to be somewhere in the primary. So yeah, it's I figured out it's when you call get token that it it weir it weirds it out. Like I called get token. Oh, okay. Go to primary. What is primary return? It's up. It returns a primary node. Okay. This is exactly the problem we talked about in class. Okay, so look at this. Where is this variable, your prime prim node? Where is that allocated at? What kind of allocation is this? I don't understand. From the allocation stuff we learned in class, what type of allocation? You're declaring a variable called prim. Right. Wait. Yeah, where is this pointer declared? So it's declared. Oh, you're allocating it here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. You gotta be worried. Well, I mean, why don't you do it here? <laughs> well, I did it there, and then I changed to here because I'm like, maybe, maybe this is causing it. So I was switching, trying to see. All right. Okay. Good. Just making sure. Okay. We got the ID. Okay. This is the classic problem, right? You're setting prim ID equal token. But every time you call get token, token changes. Yeah, but you need why to call string dupe to get a new a new string. What is so token? The lexer constantly changes token. Token yeah. is just it's a, so it's not a static reference, is what you're saying. It's like no, it is a static reference, and the lexer uses token to contain the current current, current token. We must have had the same problem in project two and project three. I I just. I don't understand because when you get the token, you set it equal to this. Is this is not a changing string, but does it always like, does it always check if token changes and changes it accordingly? Like uh, check if token changes. Go to, up to the lexer. Look for do a control F search for token. It's gonna find a lot of results. Yep. Go back up. Sorry. Can you go P. Do P. Oh. oh, that didn't do it. No, that would. You wanna undo that? Okay. Yeah. Now search for token again. Uh, do it backwards, P. P? I did press yeah. P and it just inserted a slash. Oh, that's weird. Okay, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, then search for token. All right. So see, look at here. Scan number, right? Yeah. So it's setting token, so it's changing token here in this scan number. Right. Okay, keep going. I keep going. Uh, and then scan ID or keyword. Uh, yeah, here same thing. It's it's changing token. Right. So, so every time, okay. 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 Uh, okay, that's gonna be a problem. That's definitely a problem. Okay, keep going. 
go, go. Go. Look at, damn it. Okay, go back up until we see that token. Boom, right there. What yeah. is that doing? It's setting ID equal to a string that is the same as token. Exactly, because it needs to create a new string because token is constantly changing, right? But what I don't understand... Every time you call get token, it uses the same right. token buffer. Right, right, right. But why... It's a pointer. Yeah. It, ID oh, is just a pointer to this buffer. That's why it's a pointer. Yes. Okay, 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 that makes sense. Yes. So you need to call string dupe, which will create, allocate new memory for you and give it there. So. Every time you're trying to assign to token, you need to call string oh, Okay. Data. Okay. And I saw you had that also in the switch statement too, so you want to make sure you yeah. do that there too. Okay. If you do that, your problem will go away. Ah, oh, it was so frustrating. I, I couldn't. I couldn't figure it out. It's so frustrating. It's a very good tactic. <laughs> Thank you for your help. Yeah, yeah. Any more questions? Uh, no, not really. I mean, generally.